In this video I'm going to complete the test pra the practice test. I kind of had a bit of a power failure which is probably good because then it divides it into two sections. So I just have question five here to complete. Um, I have actually done the next question. Papers were out of order but it doesn't matter. You get it all. Okay so in question five it says consider this function. State the amplitude. Well if you can't get the amplitude go back to grade 10. We already know what it is right here. 3. Amplitude is 3. It's always a positive value. So even if that says negative 3, you don't say the amplitude is negative 3. It is 3. State the equation of the axis. If a teacher asks you for an equation, you give an equation. You don't say negative 18. That's not an equation. That's just a value. So the equation is y equals negative 18. State the period. Well, my k is 5, so period is equal to 360 degrees divided by 5. How many times does 360 go into 5? Oh, it goes in 72 times. So 72 degrees is the period. What is the phase shift? Don't be fooled by these questions when it hasn't been factored out. It's the same thing as all those other transformations we've covered along the way. You must factor the 5 out. So this is really 5 theta minus 9 degrees minus 18. So you would say 9 degrees to the right. Remember it's the opposite sign of what you see here because the equation is minus d. State the range. Okay, well the range, remember, was, is going to be from the axis up and down the amplitude. So if the axis is y equals minus 18, I add 3 to it, that's going to give me minus 15. And I'm going to add 3 to minus 18, that's going to give me minus 21. I'm actually subtracting it, right? So 3 up, 3 down, plus 3, minus 3. So that's range set of y's such that y's between here and here and y is an element of real numbers. And there's your number five. Okay, now on to some applications, which I promised from the end of 6.7. A couple of trickier questions, just to make sure that you've got these word problems straightened out. Function PT equals 20 sine 360 degrees T plus 100 models a person's blood pressure while resting, where PT represents the blood pressure in millimeters of mercury, and T is the time in seconds. Question asks you to sketch a graph of the function between 0 and 3. Determine the period, what does it represent, and find an actual calculation of 1.4. So the first thing I want to do is find the axis. Always find your axis. It's right there. They've set it for you. It is 100. Well, I guess probably before you do this, you would have had to make a scale. So make sure you know how high how far up it's going to go, how far down it's going to go, and make sure your x-axis has goes to 3. I did mine in quarters. Okay, so now I've got my axis drawn on. I know it's a positive sine function. I also know what the period is. The period is 360 degrees divided by 360 because my k is 360. So that's going to be 1. So one complete cycle here, another one at 2, another one at 3. So that means I need to do a sine function up, down, and back up to here. Now remember that when you divide, um, once you know the period, you're going to divide that into quarters. So I will go to half. The half mark is here. And a quarter of that, I've got it all in quarters, so 0.25, that's going to be my highest point. 0.75 is going to be my lowest point. And I'm going up and down 20 because the amplitude is 20. So up 20, back to 0, down 20, back to 0. And we're going to continue doing that all the way across till we get to 3. So down 20, back to 2. So it's just you... Too bad we couldn't cut and paste. Um, the highest are zero, our lowest, and back to zero. So there's 
three cycles. Okay, determine the period. Okay, so where the period was one. Period is one. And what does this represent? So that's one second. So that means one second is one second equals one heartbeat because you're me measuring the pressure that's going in and out of the heart. Determine the person's blood pressure at t equals 1.4. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Well, they gave you the equation, so all you have to do is plug that in. All right, so I want p at 1.4 is going to be 20 times the sine of 360 times t, and t was 1.4 degrees plus 100. So get out your trusty calculator. That's why we've got them, right? So I'm going to do 20 sine of 360 times 1.4, close the bracket, and then add 100. And I get 111 point, it says to the nearest tenth, so 111.8. One, one, one That's pretty healthy. Okay, that was a pretty easy question. Hopefully your teacher gives you one just as lovely. Now here's the hardest one. It's a Ferris wheel question, very popular questions in, in this section. And the question asks you to talk. It's all about a girl named Heather who goes to the Super X. She gets on the Ferris wheel. She goes up, she goes down. Um, she makes two revolutions every 48 seconds. They give you all the information here that you need to know. So it says, if you read through carefully, and hopefully you've tried this already, that every 48 seconds, so I've got 48 for two cycles, she gets on the Ferris wheel when it's 1.5 meters above the ground at the bottom. So 1.5 is going to be here. There's where she starts. After 24 seconds, she's back at 1.5 meters. At 48 seconds, she's back to 1.5. So I'm going to put those few little dots on here to start. Now it says that the Ferris wheel has a radius of 11. Now radius is your amplitude, right? That's not the diameter of the wheel, it's the radius of the wheel. So this is 1.5. So we're doing 1.5 plus 11. That's going to tell us where the axis is or the axle of the Ferris wheel. So the axle of the Ferris wheel is going to be at 12.5 meters. So I'm going to sketch that on here, 12.5. And from there, our Ferris wheel is going to have an amplitude. So this is the lowest. And then the highest is going to be another uh, 11 from the axle. So I'm going to add 11 more here. That's going to give me 23.5. And that's going to be the maximum height. So let's just, I'm just going to make a little sketch here. So I have my lowest. So I'm going to do this really lightly. It's not really part of the graph, but it helps you to sketch it. And add 11 to this, so 23.5. <coughs> So what kind of scale did I put on here anyway? I've got 20, that's 24. So 23.5 is going to be just below this. I'll try to make it straight. Okay, so there's the highest point on my graph. And I have the lowest point on the graph down here, 1.5. And here's my axis. So I'm going to write the axis on here. H at T is equal to 12.5 because you know that's going to be part of your equation. Okay, so now I've got the graph it's kind of sketched out and I know that I have one complete cycle in 24 seconds. So what's one quarter of 24? Well, that's probably why you can see I use this lovely scale here because half of it at 12, um, that means this is lowest, the lowest, that's the highest point. And my zeros are going to be every one quarter of a cycle away, which is going to be every six seconds. So here goes my lovely Heather on the Ferris wheel. 
like this. Now we go another six to the zero, another six to the max, another six to a zero, another six to the minimum. So there's your sketch, lovely as it is. Okay, determine an equation of the function graphed in part A. Okay, so didn't ask for a sine or cosine function, but let's do the more difficult one, which would be the sine. Well, we'll write them both out. So um, the height at time t, let's do the cos first, because it's easiest. Starting at the lowest, so that is the lowest point on my graph, so that means it's going to be a negative cosine function. And we said that it had a radius of 11, so negative 11 cos. Now we need to know what the k value is. So to find k, I need to do period equals two, uh, 360 over k. So k is, let's write it up like this. Period is 360 divided by k. But we want to find the k. We know the period. So k is 360, 360 divided by period. K is 360 divided by the period, which is 24. And 360 divided by 24 is 15. So that's my K. So here we're going to have, I'm going to move this over a little bit so I don't run out of space. So I have minus 11 cos. Now I have 15. Now I don't have any shift when I start here, right? I'm at the lowest point, so that's great. I don't have to think too much. Cos 15t plus 12.5. Okay, so that's my that's my cosine function. If I wanted to use a sine function, I'd say h at t equals. Now, if I do sine, I could start it right here. Right here is a positive sine function. So from here, that means I shifted it six. It went six to the right. So it's going to be 11 sine, not, 11, not negative. It looks like I put a negative there, but I didn't. 11 sine, 15. Now I have t and moved it to the right. So t minus six. And this would all be degrees plus 12.5. Okay, so there's two options for equations, a cosine and a negative cos and a positive sine. If you used a positive cos, you'd just have cos 15t and then you'd have to say minus 12 because we would have shifted it here. Or you could find the other one here. So many options, right? But you always want to pick the, um, the equation that is closest, so the least amount of movement from the y-axis. Okay, so I have an equation for the function. C on your handout doesn't say that on mine, but I asked you to determine the speed because I know you're going to know need to know how to do that. So speed, remember speed is distance divided by time. So no reason why you can't can't catch this one because it's not it's not that hard. Time is just the period, right? That's 24 seconds. The distance traveled is the circumference. Right? Circumference. And you know what circumference is? 2 pi r. Right? So 2 pi radius is 11 over the time for one complete cycle, 24. And that gives me, oh, I did it somewhere just to save some time, 2.88 meters per second. Okay? So that's one thing you should know how to do. Find the speed. Okay, and what else do we have here? Um, it says uh, something about if the period was 90 seconds, how would that change the graph? Let me just find that. I, if the period was 90 seconds, how would that change the graph? Well, it would make the period a different number, right? We wouldn't have 15 here. We would have 40 four because 360 divided by 90 would be one cycle every 90 seconds so 360 divided by the the sorry 360 divided by the period which would be 90 seconds and that would give you a four here so k would be four 
k would be 4 if period was 90 seconds. And the other question was, what would it happen if the axle was one meter lower? Well, this is the axle, right? This is the axle here at 1.5. So if we move that down by one, that would mean the height, the shift up would be, the axle would be one lower. So this value here would be minus one. So this was um, C, uh, C was the speed, C was the speed, D was this, and E would be um, uh, 11.5 for the axis, because we'd be shifting it down. Okay, now for the hardest question. Um, use your equation... I think I made, might have had one other thing on yours that I didn't put on here. Well, let's go to this one anyway, and I'll try to find it in the meantime. Use your equation to determine the times when Heather reached a height of 13 meters. So you should probably take your axis, 13 meters, find 13 meters. So 13 was just about here, right? So what I'm trying to do is find when she reaches this height on the graph. And that would be at this point here, at this one here. So they're not gonna be right on the 18s, right? It's gonna be this one, and if my sketch was a little better, like this. So I have four solutions where the height, when is the height going to be 13? Now the question is, how do you calculate that? How do I figure out when the height is 13? So if the height is 13, that means I'm going to set the equation equal to 13. Get my pencil here. So I want to set the equation equal to 13 and solve. So I'm going to do that with the, um, the sine function, just because I think it would be the hardest one to do, and you should be able to do any of the others. So I'm going to say 13. When is 13 equal to 11 sine 15 t minus 6? degrees plus 12.5. So I'm trying to solve for t, right, the times. So just like solving any other equation, you have to bring this to the other side. So 13 minus 12.5. And then I'm going to divide by the 11. And that's going to give me this, the sine of 15 times t minus 6 degrees. So 13, this is going to be 0.5 divided by 11, and that comes out to 0 0.04545 is equal to the sine of 15t. I'm, I'm going to expand this just because you'll have to do that to solve anyway in the end, plus 90 degrees. So I want to know when is sine of 15t minus 90 equal to this decimal. So you know that you would use your um, second function on your calculator. So, and that will remove the sine, right? So if I do second sine of 0 0.04545, I get 2.605 approximately. 2.605, that's going to be equal to 15t minus 90. And now all you have to do is solve for t here. So I'm going to add 90 and divide by 15. Let me bring it up here. So that's going to be 92.605 divided by 15 is going to be t. So let's plug that into the calculator. So I have 92.605. I'm dividing by 15, and that gives me 6.17 seconds. Okay, so once you have that time, let's see if I did that right, because I had a slightly different answer before. Four, five. Let's do this again just one more time. 0.5 divided by 11, 0 0.04545. Um, second sign, second answer. That gives me 2.605 is 15t minus 90. So I add 90 
plus 90 equals 92 divided by 15 and I get 6.17. I got 6.17 twice, so it must be right. Okay, so I get t is equal to 6.17 seconds. So that, that makes sense with my drawing here, right? Because it's just past here. Because this height was 12.5. 12 12 when is it 13? So I get 6.17 seconds. Now if I want to know these other three, all I have to do is add the period to it, right? Half of the period. Because this is a quarter. This would be another quarter. This would so from here to here is half of the cycle. So I add 12 seconds until I get to all four answers. So that's going to give me 18.17. Add another 12. That's going to be 30.17. And one more 12, 42.17. So that's here. That's here. That's here. 18.17. I should have been on the other side. It's just my graph is a little crazy. Should have been here. Okay, so that's how you solve for a specific value. And um, I'm sure you probably had to do that somewhere in your homework assignment. Okay, so that's um, other than finding her height or the time at a certain or height at a certain time. That's easy. We've done lots of those. And I think I asked you to do that in your question, but I can't seem to find it. So you would just plug in, if I want to say, what is her height at 15 seconds? After 15 seconds, what is this height at 15? You just plug in 15 for your T here. Okay. And that's your review. And I hope that helps you. I know it's a difficult unit. A lot of students have trouble with trig, but... Um, if you've been listening to these videos, good for you. Um, you can't do much more than try your best, right? Good luck on your test, and we'll see you in Chapter 7.